Well, good morning, Viking football fans, and welcome to this edition of the Billy Skinner Lamar Viking Football Coaches Show. I'm Bill Frawley, and with me, as always, of course, is head Viking football coach, Billy Skinner. Coach, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's uh, We're a little bit later this week. It's Tuesday, so uh, we're in the thick of it right now. Yeah, it is a little bit later, and the week is partway in progress and everything, but Speaking of that, how are things going with just say like practice and, and coaches meetings so far since we are into the week a little bit? Yeah, uh, the the message this week for for the coaches was just overwhelmingly positive. We want to be overwhelmingly positive with our kids, and uh, it's an exciting time for us. This is a uh, it's it's a playoff game. You know, it's a win and end. Uh, we get to extend our season by. Um, competing and we control our own destiny. So uh, we know we're playing a team that that they're going to come out prepared and ready to roll and we're going to come out prepared and ready to roll. So uh, a bunch of kids and coaches who are excited at the challenge. Well, it'll be a home game and that'll be extra exciting and hopefully we get a good crowd out for that. Um, let's go ahead and go back to Friday night, talk a little bit. You know, some people, whether they were at the game or listened to the webcast or read the score, you know, uh, the box score and that stuff, the stats, whatever, I think everyone's going to have a different kind of perspective. But I'd really like to hear, and I think a lot of people like to hear, what's your perspective as the head coach and, you know, kind of what happened Friday night from your perspective, players' perspectives, everything else? Yeah. Uh, so we went in with a plan of we wanted to – uh, see if we can hold on to the ball uh, and, you know, try to keep their offense off the field as much as possible. Um, and so that was kind of our prep for the week. And, and when, you, when you go into a 14 point and then a 21 point hole, uh, obviously that shakes things up just a little bit for you. Uh, and so, you know, really, really proud of how our kids continued to fight. Um, we started off really slow in the first half down 24 zero, but came out in the second half. Uh, had some stops, had a score, had an opportunity at an onside kick, which we were called offsides for. I won't um, I won't complain about that. But after reviewing the film, uh, that was a that was a tough call. That was a tough call because, you know, we have a chance. We've got some momentum and then the kind of the, the wind taken out of our sails there. But um, just to be 100 percent honest, we did not. Uh, we didn't play well enough. We didn't call the game well enough. We didn't call the game well enough on any phase of the game to to win the game. And so um, just we we got our butts kicked uh, from the beginning to the end. There was a bunch of fight and all of those good things. But uh, against teams like that, you have to uh, you got to be sharp and you got to be on top of it in all facets at, at all levels. And we were not. So um, really, that's that's what the game was. It was it was a team that that kicked another team's butt. Well, you know, everyone, including myself, that watches these coaches shows appreciates that just flat out open honesty or whatever, not trying to sugarcoat stuff. So what happens? I mean, I know what you you always say, and I appreciate it so much. It's like, OK, well, this week in prep, we're going to be Vikings. We're going to do what we can work on. And there's another aspect, and we've talked about it once in a while, but there's that that mental preparedness. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I just kind of wonder whether it's a high school, college or pro or, you know, Optimus League, whatever. What's the best thing y'all do to help the guys overcome anything that's lingered in their minds or anything about just being mentally and focused and prepared to take on a team Friday night? Yeah. So this week we I had a coach who reached out and he's like, look, man, I know and I understand the process that we're we're practicing and we're trying to prevent injuries. And so uh, a couple of uh, the last few weeks, our practices have been more um, they've been less physical there. There have not been a lot of good on good. There has not been a lot of situational things just because um, my philosophy was let's let's make sure that we get everybody to the game. But, um, you know, he did a really good job of pointing out like coach that the kids have to play some more football during the week. Uh, and so yesterday we started practice instead of starting with our normal special team segment, we actually started practice with our tech ball. Uh, and for us, tech ball is a red zone game offense versus defense. It's very, very, very high energy. Uh, it's high contact and it's all of those things. And um, I, I have to do a better job of allowing our kids to play throughout the week and just kind of trust, uh, trust the weight program and trust the training staff that the kids are going to make it to Friday night. So um, I, I'm really lucky to have Coach Hugo who 
who's uh, a guy who's been doing it for a long time. And, and I was lucky to that he was willing to share that information to say, coach, let's try something a little bit different. And I think that that's our, our practice yesterday is probably the best Monday we've had all year long um, because the energy started. It, it started hot. And it just continued on and it continued on. We had some music going in the Mac and uh, it was it was a really good day of prep. And, and today is going to kind of uh, mimic what we did yesterday. Well, I'll just say kind of from a corporate perspective or whatever you want to call it, that's a sign of a good leader. You taking information that might be kind of hard to hear once in a while from right. one of the coaching staff say, yeah, OK, you're right. Let's try that. Let's uh, take a different approach. So hats off to Coach Hoog and Hats off to you for taking that uh, information and processing it. You know, and what you're saying makes me think it's got to be tough on a football team scaling your practices during the week because of the, and this is a word I don't like, but I'm going to use it, physicality. Of, right. Yeah. The game and stuff. Because, you know, I think, okay, baseball, it's not a contact sport 99.5% of the time. Right. But So everyone can go full speed on pitching and hitting and throwing and running and sliding and stuff. Basketball, semi-contact sport at times, but football, it is based it's on contact. Physical, right. So that's just got to be tough to scale. How hard are we going to go? Especially maybe if you got a few of their players that are tweaking or, or you know handling injuries right. or tweaking things and that. So that's yep. that's got to be a challenge. Yep. But I, uh, it went well yesterday, and it's <laughs> and I, it's going to go well today. So yep. Glad to hear that. What can you tell us about the freshman and JV teams recently? So, uh, yeah, we we had a couple of tough battles this week. Our our freshman gold team uh, came out with a win against Arlington High, and that was exciting, uh, twenty to six. And uh, Brock Jackson, man, that kid is uh, he's had different weapons in and out, but he's been just kind of that consistent cog in that offense. And so uh, he's done a really good job of facilitating and getting the ball to to kids and 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 guys like uh, Trey Graham, who goes and makes big plays for him and guys like uh, old Henry Richardson, old Hank, as I like to call him, who <laughs> runs the ball like a battering ram on that group. So uh, just uh it's really exciting to see them uh, compete and it was really exciting to see them get the win. Uh, and then we had another really exciting game with the, the freshman Navy team. Uh, it was a back and forth battle. Uh, it was a play of explosive offense. I mean, uh, we, we'd hit a, a big play. We started the game with uh, Dante uh, Brown running for about a 65, 70 yard touchdown on just a nice little bubble screen. Uh, and then, you know, it was just back and forth. Um, we ended up coming up short on that game, but just to see the growth in that group and see how far that offense has come and see how far that team has come, it was it was exciting to see. Uh, and then our JV group uh, did not fare uh, well, but they competed from the first snap to the end. Uh, what's really good about that group is that uh, they don't make excuses. Um, they know we've got a bunch of kids, a bunch of sophomores who are on the varsity that probably could help them. Uh, but it's just that next man up mentality. They play their tails off and, uh, you know, they 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 didn't get the outcome that they want. But I saw a team that could easily fracture uh, didn't. I saw a team that could easily start pointing fingers at one another didn't. I mean, they're they're staying together and. Um, at the end of the day, that's probably more important than anything else, that that a team that can survive adversity uh, and, and embrace adversity and stay together through adversity. That's what we're looking for here. Well, and I think that is a great point because I've seen that. You've talked about it. Others have seen it at all three levels, if you will, freshman, JV, and varsity. There's been adversity, whether it's injuries or you know, younger players coming in and learning the process and schemes and having to step up to replace maybe an injured player or something else like that. And and there's other adversity that happens. So that whole idea of just fighting through the game. And I like the, you know, what you're talking about earlier, this is a first playoff game, if you will, for the varsity, switching back to varsity here a little mm -hmm. bit. And so um, there, the, the team seems to be ready to kind of push through not only games, but this season. And yep. say, okay, let's extend the season to that third season, if you will, of the playoffs. Right. No, 100%. And uh, it's cool to see, like I talked about last week, it's cool to see those seniors uh, grabbing those young guys and saying, hey, let's let's do this together because we want to we be here too. 
Well, and that together again is the team thing, not pointing fingers, but lifting each other up and, yep. and helping to teach each other. And I'm sure there's not always 100% just, Hey, way to go there. You right. Know, but, no, that's right. But, the, but y'all as coaches kind of handle that and, and remind everyone we're all on the same team. We're all got the same goal in mind. So, yes. So what are you looking for Friday night from your uh, formidable opponents coming up? Uh, you know, we're, we're going to see a team that's got some really, really good athletes uh, at all kinds of positions, um, outside receiver, inside receiver, running back, quarterback, uh, offensive line is solid. And on the defensive side, they've got a, a big defensive line. They've got a good linebacking core. I mean, they're a solid football team. Um, they're very, very explosive on the offensive side. Yeah, we've seen them make some incredible plays and do some things like that. And defensively, uh, they do a really good job of coming up and tackling. So it's a team that's well coached. It's a team that's got a bunch of athletes that, um, you know, it's not going to be one of those deals where you just show up and, and you're going to win the game. It's going to be a four quarter battle between two teams that are hungry to make the playoffs. Excellent. Excellent. I'm going to shift gears a little bit just to have a fun question like we do sometimes. Let's move over to college football for a minute. Okay. This has been a crazy, crazy season. One, the number of top 10 matchups I've seen. It's like there's a lot of bowl games early in the season. Yep. And then, of course, there's my team, Texas A&M, that started off number six in the country. I hate preseason polls. Oh, Don't the think worst. they should be ranked till after a couple of weeks. And then finally, you know, Tennessee takes down Alabama after Alabama had some close calls. Just kind of give me your thoughts. Do you watch, do you follow uh, college football a whole lot? And, and what are your thoughts on the craziness of this season? So I, I want to be a college football aficionado. I want to watch all day. Um, I want to watch every single game. Uh, I've got three kiddos at home. And so Saturdays, <laughs> because we go so hard from yeah. Sunday to Sunday, that time I do have on Saturdays, I try to um, I try to just have it on as background noise. Sometimes I do get locked in on games. Um, here's the the number one thing I want to see happen this year is I want to okay. see Texas A and M versus Texas in that Texas Bowl. Like uh, <laughs> we were talking about it in the office yesterday, and it seemed like if everything is going the way it should, that should happen this year. And I, I don't care who wins the national title. I don't care who's in the playoff. I don't care about anything other than let's make sure that we get that Texas versus Texas A&M game in San Antonio or wherever. And I'm telling you, it'll be standing room only. Like I, that's a, a ticket I'm willing to buy. So I'm, uh, I'm hoping that happens. Which, and the reason I'm kind of laughing, I don't know if it can be heard in the background or not while you're talking I was with my son, Charlie, that's about to graduate from A&M. Yeah, that's where I spent seven of the best years of my life, and now I work for them. But we were talking over the weekend and saying, oh, here come the predictions already from the bowl matchup predictions, you know, halfway through the season. It's A&M versus Texas and the Texas Bowl. And it's like, how many years have we seen that prediction? Yeah. doesn't happen. But, you know, Coach, that would be a heck of a matchup, wouldn't it? That's all I want to see. That's uh, I just I want that old school <laughs> Texas versus Texas A&M feel that we haven't had in forever. So um, I, I hope that happens. And I will say this: Tennessee's offense is really fun to watch. I mean, anytime oh, yeah. Alabama, who is uh, they are the the guru of all things defense. When you when you do what you did against them you know something special is ha happening. And so uh, that's cool to see in Knoxville. I've got a, a couple of my, my in-laws. Uh, I've got some family in Tennessee. And so they're huge Tennessee fans. So I try to follow them pretty closely. And they're they're beyond uh, just excited and, and beside themselves. Well, Coach, I'm going to swing it back around to Lamar High School here for a moment. Last week on the Coach's Show, you gave a plug mention the Lamar volleyball team was hosting Arlington High last Tuesday night. And I, I said, you know, I need to go get some Frito pie and popcorn. And so I went to the match, saw you there. And I thought it was so cool. You had your kids with you. And, you know, again, it's, it's just neat. You know, I, I don't think you felt obligated to be there, but it was a good thing for you to support another one of the teams. But you made it an opportunity to have your family there with you and have some family time. You and I got to talk for a few minutes. Yes. But I just thought that's so cool that you're able to combine that time. Oh, yeah. And it's. I'm telling you, these kids, they they love it. Uh, anytime they hear I'm going to be at a volleyball game or at a tennis match or anything, Daddy, can we go? Daddy, can we go? Daddy, can we go? So, <laughs> you know, they want to be around just as much as I want them around. And uh, most of the time, 
it's it's because of concession stands. Uh, <laughs> they love concession food, and so that has a big part to do with it. But it does. It, it makes me happy to be able to um, have those two components together because I, I love. I love the work that we do here. I love this, and it's not even a job. I love this place, and I love what what our role is here at this place, and I love my family. And so it's really cool to have the two things that I really, really enjoy uh, in one spot. Definitely so. Well, concessions makes me think of Gator, makes me think of Gatorade, Powerade, all the yes. brands. All the aids. <laughs> let's, let's give a plug. Do you still need some more? Still need some power aids. We've got uh, these last two games, and then however long we get to play uh, in the tournament, that's the uh, that's the goal for us. So uh, always accepting power aids and Gator aids and Costco aids and um, all of them. So um, the twenty ounce bottles, whatever you can come up with, will be here at the Mac and uh, accepting all donations. Awesome. Any other booster club plugs you want to sh- give shout outs or whatever this week? No, uh, big thing right now is if if you're a, a member of the booster club, but you're not necessarily on the board yet, or if you're not a member of the booster club, but uh, want to consider a board spot, um, that's something that's being discussed that we'll have a couple of board uh, positions open. And so uh, for anybody who's interested, if you can just get a hold of, of Garrett Carey or let me know and I'll point you in the right direction. Um, we we want to make sure that our board um, is filled with with parents that want to be uh, a part and want to give the time and serve. So um, if that sounds like fun to you, jump in. And it is fun. Those those meetings and all the activities and finding the different places to plug in. Booster Club activity is fun, actually. It, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy that time I get with them. Definitely. So, well, coach, anything else you want to add or say or plug before we sign off today? So we've got, okay, let's see a couple of things. One, I don't know if you heard about our um, uh, pep rally last week, but there was a skit that that went wrong. And one of our kiddos got, uh, he accidentally got hit in the nose with the Thor hammer. Uh, He ended up with some stitches. Um, His name's Sergio Flores. And let me tell you, this kid, you know, it, it was, it was a bad scene, but he was, he was laughing and he was joking and, uh, you know, he was all about it for the, for the school spirit. And so, uh, you know, it was one of those things that it was kind of ugly to see, but it's also really neat to see a kid who, uh, has such a great personality and see a kid who, um, you know, it it was just, it was an accident and and the kid that accidentally hit him felt awful. And for Sergio to, to laugh and just kind of, Hey, it's, it's, everything's okay. Um, that was neat. And so I just want to give a shout out to Sergio for, for bleeding for the school. And, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> did he bleed just, blue and gold? <laughs> that's right. No, he did. He, he def- there was some blue and gold there, but, uh, just his, his, his team, his team spirit and just his, his personality, man, that was, that was awesome to see. And it was awesome to see him smiling and laughing and good to know he's doing okay. Uh, so I want to give Sergio a shout out, um, tonight is volleyball it's our last home game against sgp uh and then next week we'll start i think it's next week i'll i'll let y'all know uh for sure but next week starts our volleyball playoffs um and i believe we're going to be taking on highland park so really excited for our girls and really excited to see them compete tonight and see them compete next week in the playoffs um and then lastly if you have feet and you have a car or you don't have a car but you have feet get to Cravens Field tonight. We've got Shaq versus Nichols for the eighth grade city championship kicking off at 845. We're going to have a DJ. Uh, We'll have a guest announcer. I mean, we're really excited about this and the the class of 2027, um, the the future Lamar Vikings that we're going to have on the field. There are some uh, there's some really good athletes out there. There's some really good big kids out there. This is going to be an exciting game and it's going to be exciting to see the future of Lamar football and Lamar athletics. Cool. Would you remind us of the start time for all the activities? Yes. So volleyball, six o'clock. Okay. And then the Shaq Nichols game. Shaq Nichols, I say 5.30, get there at 5.30. We'll kick off at 5.45. Always be early. My mom taught me that. And so yeah. uh, always be early. We were that family. If we had a flight, 
we were going to be there four and a half hours early. Like you, we're not getting left. So be there early. Make sure you get your seat, get you something good from the concession stand, listen to some tunes, and uh, get ready to lock in on some fun football. You know, speaking, I was so sidetracked for a moment. Speaking of being at the airports early, yesterday I had to fly up here to Minneapolis. I got to the air, airport about an hour early, which is my normal thing. Flight was delayed three hours, so I was there four hours. Oh, as it see? Out. But, oh, speaking of shout outs, I meant to say this earlier uh, at the volleyball game last week. I was at the concession stand getting that good Frito pie. And by the way, they use good kind of white cheese on that yes. um, Frito pie at the volleyball games. But player was in line next to me. He looks at me, goes, hey, Mr. Farley, how are you doing? I was like, hey, how's it going? He goes, you know who I am? And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I was struggling. He goes, Jesse. And I was then I botched the last name, but Jesse Little was there, and he had been up in the booth last season on a Thursday night helping gotcha. spot and stuff. What a fine young man. I know he's not the only one, but, again, polite, respectful. And I, know that, I know that's typical of the players, but yeah. I just thought it was worth a shout-out to you and to him about what a great guy. I love to hear that, and that's, that's all that kid. Like, that's who he is all the time he he represents what we want lamar viking football to be about so that really excites me to hear that all right well this coming thursday and friday nights so let's fill the stands with viking fans tonight tuesday night let's fill the stands and at cravens for the uh shack nichols game and let's support the volleyball team and their push into the playoffs and everything else that's going on. a lot of neat stuff happening a lot of fun happening at lamar all right well until next time I'm Bill Frawley with head Viking coach Billy Skinner saying VFND. VFND.